didn't uh, deserve that, nor did my children, nor did the people who have believed in me for all these years. I, I didn't want anybody, any of those people to believe that I had done them wrong or lied to them or that I was a fraud. I, I, I'm, I pride myself on honesty. I pride myself on truth. Truth is the only thing I'm interested in. Other lies will get you nowhere, but um, lies build upon lies and build upon lies. It's too much to cover. I, I, I'm obsessed with the truth. And um, so today is my, actually my, the first uh, opportunity that I've been able to speak about this um, case uh, in full for the, for the first time. More than five years after their breakup, Johnny Depp's $50 million defamation lawsuit against ex-wife Amber Heard is taking center stage in a Virginia courtroom. In opening statements on April 12th, Depp's lawyers argued that Heard ruined the actor's reputation by choosing to lie about him for her own personal benefit. Back in 2018, Heard wrote an essay for the Washington Post in which she described herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse. Although the article never mentioned Depp by name, it alluded to Depp, and his attorneys previously said in court documents that Heard's essay was all part of an elaborate hoax. The Pirates of the Caribbean star also claimed in court documents that Heard concocted her story in the hopes of generating positive publicity and to advance her career. Days before the trial began, Heard announced that she would be taking a break from social media, which many found somewhat suspicious. She stated in the post, Johnny is suing me for what I wrote in the Washington Post, in which I recounted my experience of violence and domestic abuse. I wrote about the price women pay for speaking out against men in power. I continue to pay that price, but hopefully when this concludes, I can move on and so can Johnny. A spokesperson for Depp denied the allegations, saying this follows a pattern of her elaborate, erroneous claims which have continued to change and evolve over time for the purpose of Hollywood shock value, of which Amber has mastered and used to exploit a serious social movement. My goal is the truth. My goal is the truth because it, it, it killed me that people that I had spoken with, that I had met with over the years, who I who maybe were in a, not such a great position and they needed advice and I gave them the best advice I could. Um, all I could think of was that those people would, would, would think that I um, was a fraud and that I had lied to them. I think it was an easy target for her to hit because once you've trusted somebody for a certain amount of years and you've told them all the secrets of your life, um, that information then of course can be used against you, especially if it's taken to a point that is teetering on impossible, uh, uh, and teeters over impossible in fact at times. It's so, I, I, I am not um, some maniac who needs to be high or loaded all the time. Um, um, and we, we, we have many things in common, certain blues music and, well, music, literature, things of that nature. So it, for that year or year and a half, it was, uh, it was amazing. Um, there were a couple of things that, I don't know, stuck in my head that I, noticed that I thought might be a little bit of a, a dilemma at some point. For, ex for example, <clears throat> if I, if I, 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 was, I worked quite a lot, and when I would come home from work, um, I, would, I would come in the house or the hotel and she would sit me down on the couch and give me a glass of wine and 
uh, take my boots off, set them to the side, and I'd never experienced anything like that in in, in my life. I, I I just never felt that was I just never experienced that before, and it became a regular thing um, that she did. Uh, this kind of routine. And I remember one night I came home from work and, uh, and I think she was on the phone or something and or busy, she was doing something. And um, so I sat down on the couch and I took my boots off and um, suddenly Miss Hurd approached with this look on her face that she, and she just said, what did you just do? What did you do? I said, what, what, what do you mean? You took your boots off. I said, I said yeah, yes, I did. You, 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 you were busy, you know. No, no, no. That's my job. That's what I do. You don't do that. I do that. Okay. All right then. And then she said, "Let me get you a glass of wine." And she brought me the glass of wine. But I did take pause, of course. Uh, the fact that she was visibly shaken or upset that I had uh, I had broken her rules of routine. I thought that strange. And then once that once you notice something like that, then you start to notice other little tidbits and things that come out. And then, and then, uh, within a year, year and a half, she had become this another person almost. Depp's longtime doctor, David Kipper, participated in a deposition that was played in court on April 18th. In the deposition recorded in February, Kipper recalled treating the actor after his fingertip was severed. Kipper said he didn't know how Depp had gotten injured back in March of 2015 when he cleaned the actor's wound in Australia. Depp previously claimed Heard threw a large glass vodka bottle at him and that the bottle hit the countertop where he had his hand and caused his finger to be severed. I had to have three surgeries to reconstruct my finger, Depp said back in 2019. When asked in the deposition about a text message to Kipper from Depp that claimed the actor cut his own finger, Kipper responded, I think that's what it said, yes. Kipper also testified that the actor told the ER doctor he cut his own finger with a knife. But many have pointed out this may reflect a behavior learned from his own parents' relationship in which Depp's father was allegedly more submissive in the relationship and often wanted to maybe rebel against the alleged vicious bullying wife, but often couldn't due to fear of consequences. My mother, um, she was very unpredictable, as, as cruel as anyone can be, um, with all of us, uh, that is to say, my sister Christy and my, my brother Danny and my sister Debbie, and also my father. She could become quite violent, and she was quite violent. And she was quite cruel, and she, and though there was physical abuse, certainly, um, which could uh, be in the form of uh, an ashtray being flung at you, you know, it hits you in the head, or you'd get beat with a high heel shoe, or, or a telephone, or whatever is handy. We were never exposed to any type of safety um, or security. The the um, the only thing that one could do, really, um, was to try to stay out of the line of fire. She would call me. She would call me cockeye, one eye, um, anything she could get to to. Uh, uh, demean, humiliate, the verbal abuse, the psychological abuse was, uh, was almost worse than the, than the, than the, than the, the beatings.
My father, my father was a very kind man. Uh, in fact, my father's still alive. He's he's a very kind man. Um, he's, he's a very quiet man. Um, in fact, he's very shy. Um, not a confrontational uh, person in any way. And when Betty Sue, my mother, um, would go off on 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 a tangent uh, toward my my father, um, and 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 of course in front of the kids, it was no matter to her. Uh, he would he would um, he, he amazingly remained very very stoic and uh, never as she was rationing him with horrible um, things he stood there and just looked at her while she delivered the pain and he swallowed it he took it on april 19th depp took the stand and explained why he chose to pursue the high profile defamation case Quote, I felt it my responsibility to stand up not only for myself, but stand up for my children. They were in high school, and I thought it was diabolical that my children would have to go to school and have their friends or people in school approach them with the infamous People magazine cover with Miss Heard with a dark bruise on her face. The cover released in June of 2016, featured a photo taken from Heard's friend of the actress in which she looked visibly injured. Depp also stated he never reached the point of striking Heard in any way, nor has he ever struck any woman in his life. That After you fucking night. got physically violent with me, I texted Travis, I said, come up here, because I didn't want anything to, to happen. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. come, it's coming to save me. No, go ahead, continue. You, you, you. Travis, do the rescue. No, that, no, that was the last one. You can go, uh, you go. That was the last insult. Oh, yeah. You, you, do, you called me a liar, and yet, yeah. Yet. I watched you lie. You called me a liar? I watched you lie. I You're, heard it. I was right there. There's no, what? You still haven't told me what lie it is. We'll talk but yet, to, every single fucking time. We'll you know you Travis. do this every single fucking time. We'll talk time. to Travis. I'm not fucking talking to nobody. No, Fuck that. You, you fucking... go fucking jerk. Go jerk him off. I don't care. I really could care less. It's you every single time. You latch onto some sort of thing. When I already told you, I don't know what you're fucking talking about. You don't even know what you're talking about. You still haven't even told me what it is. But run with it. You I have told you it. what it is. No, you haven't. I said to Travis, I said, Good. no, I said to you, hey, okay. tell Travis right. what just happened. You, oh, you careless. told me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, t tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing and you, you in the face. Out. And you said, no, fuck it. I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you lie. You. And then I, I didn't punch you, and then by I, the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, hit you me. across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you've been a lot of fights, been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah, no, I when you fucking have a closed I fist. You get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. You can't. I don't know deck what you. the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are your toes? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? How are you I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. Oh, That's the difference you between me those. and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you start you physical are fights. You're a baby. Because Call you, the fuck off. Because Johnny. you start physical fights. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. So I had because to get the fuck out. And Johnny, whenever he was injured or touched at all, we referred to it in these ways of punching or clocked or whatever. And whether you discussed it with him or not. The last thing you do in, in talking to him afterwards or trying to reconcile with him is to get into what the definition of those words mean to him. Just say what So happens. I just never, I never even addressed it. He would, if he was ever pushed, it was, it was a quote. He called it a, a cold clock. I mean, it's just very dramatic. Isn't it, it true? Him. What are your thoughts on the situation? Do you stand with Heard or do you stand with Depp? Let us know in the comments below. And stay tuned to Trend Culture for more news on the case as it breaks.